Good afternoon, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving within the church. The wearing of, op of masks is optional while seated. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and the exit of the church. Thank you for supporting our Basilica Parish. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of mass, we ask you to follow the usher's directions for leaving the church. Our gathering chant this evening is, O praise my soul, the Lord, number 677 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Our presider is Father Cecil Critch. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome this evening, and especially we welcome all of you and all the visitors, especially visiting us from outside the province, and welcome to our beautiful city. Today on this feast day of uh, the Assumption this weekend, uh, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she was taken body and soul into heaven. Felicitation à tous les Acadiens pour leur fête d'Ascension de Marie. For all those who are Acadians, this is their big feast day across the country. So we, we certainly welcome any of those uh, French-speaking uh, people here today. And uh, we extend our blessings and our thoughts uh, to all the Acadians, especially in the Atlantic Canada. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us for the time that we have failed to be merciful. We have failed to be compassionate to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. <clears throat> you were sent to heal the cause of heart Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison You came to call sinners Christ eleison Christ
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs, in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent opened in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on its heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that it might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, so that there she can be nourished for 1,260 days. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the response to the psalm, my soul shall exult in my God. My soul shall exult in my God. My soul shall exult in my God. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. My soul shall exult in my God. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation my soul shall exalt in my God the Lord And sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. My soul shall exalt in my God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For Christ must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from, from those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he had made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months, and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Feast of the Assumption declares that the end of Mary's earthly life was really a beginning, the beginning of her powerful intercession in for heaven for all of us. Her assumption we celebrate today is the beginning of an era when all generations would call her blessed. In the words of Mary's Magnificat, we've heard, today celebrates the good news that Mary has come to share fully in Christ's victory over sin and death. That is why the image of the woman in the first reading has been understood from the earliest centuries of the church as an image of Mary in her risen glory, sharing fully in the risen glory of her son. Today's feast points us towards the mystery of the resurrection. On the Feast of the Assumption, we look to Mary as one who fully conformed to the image of her risen son. We see in her our own eternal destiny. Our own sharing in the resurrection of Jesus begins at our baptism. We are baptized into Christ's risen life. Baptism calls us to live this risen life here and now in preparation for that moment when we will live in it for the fullness of eternity. Mary shows us our ultimate destiny, but she also shows us how to get there. In the words of St. Paul in the second reading today, Mary has been brought to life in Christ and shares fully in his risen life. And like her, we too will come to share fully in Christ's risen life ourselves. That is why in the words of the preface of today's feast day, we can look to Mary as a sign of hope on our pilgrim way. Mary is the great believer, the first disciple and follower of Jesus, who knew how to ponder in her heart her own son's words and actions. She is the faithful mother who stays near her son as he is rejected condemned and executed on the cross. Then, as a witness to the risen Christ, we know she prays with the disciples to receive the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We often look at today's Feast of the Assumption as an opportunity to celebrate Mary and her inspiring faithfulness in her life. We also remember the great event of the Annunciation. March 25th, we celebrated that. Years before, when she was taken, before she was taken body and soul into heaven. When Mary first said yes to the angel's invitation to become the mother of God, we celebrate that simple, humble yes, which God used to set events in motion that changed our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, and literally the whole of human history. As we recall and celebrate Mary's yes to God, let's not forget that today's Feast of the Assumption is really about God's yes to Mary. It's about the way God rewarded her for her surrender to God and God's plan. It's about the way God honored her for saying yes every day of her life, even when it meant letting sword of sorrow and grief pierce her own soul. 
It's about God lifting Mary up at the end of her life and crowning her with glory, all in response to her humble, loving faithfulness to God. Today's feast also tells us something about our own lives here. It tells us that God rejoices every time that we say yes to God's will for us in our lives. It tells us that God honors every single time we decide to follow the way of Jesus. It tells us that no act of faith, no act of trust, and no act of love or obedience escapes God's notice. It tells us that where Mary has gone, we too hope to follow. In the Gospel today, we see Mary sent out on mission to the hill country to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was also expecting. And Mary's greeting caused the Spirit of God to stir within Elizabeth. Like Mary, whenever we journey to those who are vulnerable and in need, we are giving expression in our lives to Mary's visitation. Mary brought the joy of the good news with her, and, her, and she models for the disciples and for us how to proclaim near and far the good news of Jesus Christ. Mary could be called the first missionary disciple. She was faithful to God's call and God's purpose for all her earthly life. She was the one who literally bore Christ and carried Christ to the world. As I said before, here before, the Greeks have a term for Mary called Theocritus, the God-bearer. In her, we see what we are called to be, channels of the Lord's visitation to others. Through, though she has left the world, Mary is not removed from it. As our mother and our intercessor, she remains ever close to each one of us. As the first reading says, Mary stands over and against all evil, and we can count on her to protect us. Mary is the bringer of life, the bringer of the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. So we pray for each of us then that as we set out in haste to places, we journey in order to carry Jesus to the world. And just as Mary carried Jesus in her womb and nurtured and loved and supported him, she nurtures, loves, and supports each of us on our journey, our pilgrim journey of faith. And along our way of the cross and at our own eventual Calvary and journey back to God, which we all have to go through, Mary's love will surround us and our prayers will support us and comfort us in the end. We need never hesitate, brothers and sisters, to turn to Mary in all of our needs and troubles and difficulties. The feast of her assumption celebrates her full sharing in the risen life of Christ. She gives us hope that in the words of today's second reading, we will all be brought to life in Christ. We can confidently turn to her, asking her to pray for us now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. We profess our faith as we pray together the creed, and we will bow as we say, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn now in great faith and trust to our Heavenly Father, trusting in God to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, and all of our church leaders, that they may continue to receive the wisdom, courage, and love necessary to lead and guide the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, God's beloved family, that we may be spiritually nourished through our sharing in the Eucharist and through the care we provide for all who are poor and needy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, as we journey through the challenges of restructuring, that the Spirit of God may enable us all to live our lives 
trusting in Christ who will be with us in the challenges we face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all public and global leaders, that their decisions and policies will reflect a spirit of justice and concern for the common good of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewal of our hearts and minds, that, like Mary, we may know and follow the will of God for our lives and bring Christ to the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For persons experiencing loneliness, discouragement, or mental suffering, that our care and friendship may reveal the loving face of Christ to them in their daily struggles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick at home or for those who are in hospitals, senior or long-term care facilities, and we pray for all caregivers who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, we pray especially today for Patricia Martin, whose first anniversary of death is today, and we pray for families who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they may be consoled. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts, your own intentions today. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. And we make our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O God, and through the intercession of the most <coughs> blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, <coughs> Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son. 
She brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heavens and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices be prayed, joined with theirs, in humble praise as we acclaim. are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your saints, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Baptist, St. Maximilian Kolbe, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession. In your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O the Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, with all the bishops, the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. Gather to yourself all your children, O merciful Father, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Grant admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And we pray with confidence now to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should come under my roof, my roof but only say, say the, the word, word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying Amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of Amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow towards the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen.
Spirit present in our soul. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love release. this bread we share, the body of our Lord. Is not this wine we drink, the blood of Christ outpoured? One bread, one body, one cup, one cup. One faith, one spirit, present in our soul. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love, release. One call, one faith, one spirit present in us all. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people. faith one spirit present in us all one prayer one blessing one hope one peace one church one people Uh, just a reminder to pick up a copy of our bulletin as you're uh, heading out today. Uh, a couple of highlights. Um, we're collecting some school supplies for needy children. So it's being coordinated by Linda Holden at the Center for Life. So please bring any school supplies. You're out. You don't have children anymore. Just pick up a few school supplies that you see around Walmart or wherever you go or Staples or someplace and uh, bring them to the parish office or bring 
some to uh, here at the church next Sunday during masses next Saturday and Sunday. So donations of school supplies would help for some of the children in need. So thank you in advance uh, for your generosity. Uh, preparation for the sacraments of confirmation Holy Eucharist for next year will start in September. So please call the parish to register. Uh, just a reminder, last week our offertory collection was uh, just thirty-eight seventy. $3,870. So this is not good when we're trying to keep a great big place like this in uh, going. Uh, so I appeal to all of you and thank you for your continuing generosity for those who give all the time, for those on live stream and those people who are watching us hundreds every day and more hundreds on the weekend uh, to encourage you to help us to, maintain, to keep our basilica operations. We still have to pay all the basic uh, things that we have to pay to keep this place going. It's a big place. We don't have $10,000 a month in heating, but uh, with the green heat, it stays on all summer, and we have, uh, it becomes air conditioning. So, I mean, this is, it's always on the go. So, we've cut the, the finance committee and ours, we've cut down to bare bones um, here. So, uh, any, I know it's been the pandemic has been on the go and all that, and everybody's in the same boat, but if, uh, appeal to your generosity to keep this uh, keep our operations going here at the Basilica. So all of your collection goes just only to keep our Basilica operating. So we appreciate anything you can do for us, any generosity that you can give us. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads now for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, through whom you have found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Down here in the back here, I'd like them to wave to me so everybody can see who they are. Bill and Shirley Carey are down here. Bill and Sherry, Shirley Carey. Tomorrow they'll celebrate 68 years of marriage. 68. <laughs> You're married longer than I'm alive. <laughs> that says something. So God bless you for your witness, and they come to Mass all the time, and may God continue to bless you with good health and happiness. God bless. Our recessional hymn is number 458 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Hail Queen of Heaven, the Ocean Star. <laughs> 